Mike with American Honda calling you back regarding your 2018 CRV and the fuel smell and the oil issue. Well, um, but I was able to inquire further with our engineering department regarding your problem. Um, and they have advised me that, that, that at this time there is no issue with the vehicle. Uh, I can only imagine how frustrating it must be to buy a brand new vehicle and then have fuel smells issues, fuel mixing with the oil, and possible permanent engine damage. I'm Jerry, this is Jerry Jr's Garage. Let's get right into this video. While I don't consider myself a mechanic today, way back in 2003 as a teenager, one of the highlights I had working as a mechanic apprentice for a Honda dealership was putting the first premium tank of fuel in the S2000s. It was at that point that I became fascinated with Honda and the technology behind them. While working as a mechanic apprentice for Honda, I eventually got tasked with many other things within the sales department, service department, and detail shop, as you would expect, and eventually I did get fired for either having way too many speeding tickets or buying and selling way too many trade-ins. But fortunately enough for me, that sparked a lot of interest and I learned a ton. I immediately went out and bought an Acura Integra GSR, which at the time was cranking out more horsepower per liter than any other naturally aspirated engine. That was known as the legendary B18C1, which came out in 1994 with an MSRP of around $20,000. While not the first VTEC, it was the largest at the, of the time. Fast forward today to the Earth Dreams 1.5 liter direct injected turbocharged engine, and let's look at the possibilities as to why there may be a problem and uh, what is going to happen to resolve this. Honda, like many other automobile manufacturers, have now switched over to direct injection and turbocharging. With that, you have a couple of different issues. You have to extract the heat and carbon deposits on the valves become an issue. From what I can see on this engine, Honda did a really good job. There's been a lot of engineering to go into this to take away some of these issues, such as carbon deposits on the valve. Now, as far as the cooling on this engine, it's gonna be part of the best and worst things. It's very important to get the heat away from a direct injected turbocharged engine. And what Honda has done on this engine is pretty amazing to keep this thing running cool and efficient. Believe me, heat will be the killer of these engines. And one of the things that I thought was cool was these tiny little passages between each piston in the cylinder walls to help keep the hottest part of the engine cool. Depending on the model of the 1.5 liter that's in your Honda, you may or may not have this issue, but it seems to be only popping up in cold temperatures, which makes sense because colder air is more dense. When your car starts up and it's in open loop, your computer is pretty much reading a preset map depending on your throttle position. So if that's wrong and it can only compensate so much and when it gets cold, more fuel gets dumped into the cylinder, therefore washing past your pistons and into your oil. You see, it is not until the computer reaches closed loop, which the engine has to be warmed up for it to do, that the computer is then able to compensate, therefore not dumping the incorrect amount of fuel into your engine. This is why Honda is going to tell you to wait for the vehicle to warm up, avoid short trips, and continue using quality oil, check your oil regularly, and if you can, store your vehicle in the garage. Okay, now that I've probably confused you and I confused myself trying to explain this in video, it's extremely difficult to go into all the engineering aspects of this, but we're gonna look at the broadest spectrum of what possibly could be going on with the fuel getting into the oil on the smaller direct injection engines and as to why. So, onto open and closed loop. Um, our engineering department reports that the engine on this particular vehicle is very efficient at heat dissipation. Um, due to this, it takes uh, a while for the engine to heat up, especially if you are taking shorter trips where you're not giving the engine enough time to properly heat up. Let's keep in mind that open and closed loop is simply a contributing factor and that a turbocharged engine is always going to have a sacrificial amount of fuel squirted into the engine that really does nothing for creating power. Now, these are very, very well thought out, copyrighted, things so I'm you know I'm just I'm just telling you that this information is extremely confidential and very broad and this is just a contributing factor so don't hate me from being extremely broad here so when you start your car up it's gonna be an open loop open loop gets all the inputs from the computer and in the computer is trying to tell basically the engine to run at the perfect air fuel mixture on a direct injected engine, especially a small turbocharged ones, the air fuel is gonna struggle in this range here. While in open loop, 
because it is so cool and in, in direct injection turbocharged engine there's a constant struggle when it comes to the rich and lean condition because there's a rich and a lean condition going on within the cylinder if you were to put a camera in the cylinder you could see this however that's going to be impossible for me to explain but this is where the struggle is with these engines so especially on a small engine it's really hard to determine the perfect air fuel ratio while keeping that turbo happy and everything else happy and working together that is why when it gets warmer and it's in closed loop it's really ideal for the engine to be running in closed loop now let's switch over into closed loop depending on your throttle position it's going to switch back and forth all of the inputs are going to be coming from the temperature or from the sensors on the engine and that is going to tell what the, it wants for the air fuel ratio so it goes into the computer and then it is going to run at that like basically ideal condition is where i'm going to like try to explain this so in open loop when the engine is cool and it will switch back and forth it is going to struggle especially on a small engine so let's keep that in mind now with all that stuff in mind the l15 1.5 liter direct injected earth dreams engine is not affected by this too much fuel in the oil on all of the models what that tells me is that the l15 running at different boost pressures different compression ratios and different fuel pressures is basically there's a perfect storm going on in one of these engines and we are not really sure yet which one i'm just estimating that maybe the one that running is running at the highest compression ratio is having you know more prone to this issue because of the tuning and the pcm when it's running in open loop so simply they can just reflash that and hopefully it'll fix that now if it doesn't fix that basically it tells me that maybe it means that a more of a major thing is going on here meaning maybe they have to swap out turbos because there's you know the wrong amount of blades on one or maybe they have to do something with the compression ratio which would be even worse regardless of the l15 having some issues right now it's an extremely well designed engine for the 1.5 liter to be cranking out equivalent to like a 2.4 liter it says a lot for engineering when it comes to direct injection turbocharged engines like i said heat is going to be the number one killer in these engines and they're sure to get it the iron the kinks worked out and i can't wait to see what they come up with the only thing that really bothers me on these engines is they actually say vtec they are not vtec that's a whole nother thing vtec actually changes the load profile on the cam this does not do that it just changes the timing so if this video helped you out get a broad spectrum like really really broad and speculative somewhat of a, a idea of what's actually going on with these smaller direct injection engines that honda has come out with please give it a like and a share and uh, stay tuned for more jerry jr's garage one more thing i'd like to add if you own a direct injected anything it's completely normal for fuel dilution to happen in your oil that's why manufacturers have started adding an oil over full line on your oil dipstick so keep an eye on that Change your oil often, use good oil, and remember that your oil in these engines is not only a lubricant, but a dispersant and a hydraulic fluid and so on and so forth. So I hope this helps you out. Just a little pro tip for you. Stay tuned for more. Jerry Jr.'s Garage. Thanks for watching. Oh, the good old days. Oh, look. This one seems good.